Keep it going for Richard and all the comics you've seen tonight. We have had every kind of comic on this show. Yeah. They decided they did not have enough Nebraska dad energy on this show. Nebraska dad. Some of you don't even know what that's about. It's like stuff like yelling at kids for not knowing something. It was our job to teach them in the first place. Nebraska dad energy. I got a CPAP machine for my birthday last year. Nebraska dad energy. I say ope when I'm finished in the bedroom. Dad energy. <laughs> Just an ope and a thank you, ma'am, and I roll over and go to sleep. That's. My house is clean for the first time since probably COVID started. You know, in some places, that gets enthusiasm. In Germantown, it gets judgmental stares from everyone in the room. Just you have a suit on. Why? Why is your house a mess? Like I have four teenagers at home. My house looks like a FEMA disaster relief area at some point. I'm a father, not a badass. That's where the four teenagers comes from. That I felt you pull back when I mentioned FEMA, though. That's I find that to be common in the South. Every time I, I mention FEMA, you guys get like flashbacks to bad toilet paper or something. I don't understand the reaction. But I, I had a dinner party for some of my stand-up comedian friends last weekend. And my kids started cleaning the entire house from top to bottom. This is not usual behavior. And when I asked them why they were cleaning the house, they told me it was because they were excited. Because today they get to meet real stand-up comedians. <laughs> My kids are jerks, you guys. Jerks, a whole lot of them. I got them back, though. I told them Kevin Hart's coming over this weekend. They're drywalling my upstairs bathroom right now. That's. My kids think they're funny, too. I youngest son is constantly coming to me with joke ideas. Like, Dad, I've got a joke. You've got to try this on stage. It's like, what does my shirt say? And I said, SpongeBob SquarePants. And he said, nope. It says applesauce. That was my youngest son's joke. <laughs> Frankly, you're all a bunch of jerks for not laughing at it. I just, I thought this was a Christian establishment. We throw each other a bone, you know, that's instead, no, your son's an idiot. That's all I got off of all of you right now. That was, we're not impressed with your son. Applesauce, that's absurd. He says, the best part about that joke, Dad, is it works with every shirt that has words on it. <laughs> Unless your shirt says applesauce. And then you just can't do comedy that night. That's good advice. He's officially the smartest of all of my children. That's solid advice. 
into my teenage daughter's room. I knock on the door uh, very timidly because she scares the bejesus out of me. You know, that, Asked her if she had a joke for me. And she looked me dead in my eyes, like right through my soul. You know, the only only the way like a teenage girl could do, just like sees right through everything that sucks about me, you know? <laughs> and she said, I don't know, Dad. Your comedy career is kind of a joke. <laughs> and slammed the door in my face, you know? <laughs> Teenage girls are savages, but that was the proudest moment I've ever had as her father. That's, how can I not be proud of that? That's a good burn. I'm a comedian and I appreciate a good burn. But I did yell that she was adopted through her door. Like, you were adopted. She was only relieved by that. That's, that was no, that was no comeback. It's like, oh, thank goodness. I saw where these genetics end up at age 43 and I was kind of hoping I didn't have to go there. So thank you. I'm. Bearded guys out in the audience. Well, well bearded guys. Yeah. Oh. Are you also hiding sins against nature underneath the ear beard? That's what I'm doing with mine. That's all this is for. Yeah. But you, you do have to shave these things off from time to time, guys. You gotta check how aging is going. Count your chins like rings on a tree. But don't, just be careful. Don't just spring it on your spouse, okay? You gotta give them a heads up. I shaved my beard off one time for this movie role. Uh, don't look it up because you'll probably ever find it. That's, that's my daughter's 100% correct about my career. That's, but I had shaved it off and uh, I came downstairs all beardless for the first time and my wife looked at me and she said, huh. She said, you kind of look like Rick Moranis now, right? Which I didn't know how to take that, but then. She was like, oh, no, 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 no. I happen to find Rick Moranis to be very sexy. What? <laughs> this. I come downstairs and I look like Jason Oa, for instance. <laughs> My wife would not have to make a big scene out of it qualifying that with, like, Oh, no, 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 I happen to find Aquaman to be sexy, yeah, that's not... Instead, I come downstairs and she realizes that she's married to the dad from Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. <laughs> Only with, like, bad credit and even a worse back, you know, that's her reality now. She's crying herself to sleep now, I think that's... These guys like the dark stuff. You guys. <laughs> the show is just for these guys. You, I won't stop you from listening, but you know, that's. That joke about Rick Moranis, I know you're not buying it, because you're like, that man looks nothing like Rick Moranis. <laughs> Some of you are Googling pictures of Rick Moranis on your phones right now. I can see you. I, you have lights on you. You're not invisible. Um, and you're like, no. I just gained a lot of weight. That's all that is. I've gained a lot of weight. I look like I spent the entire pandemic eating Rick Moranis. Just 
one delicious bite at a time. I, I say delicious because you know Rick Moranis is going to be delicious. Did you just go, uh? That's the key master. Have some respect. He's a national treasure. He's a national treasure. Are you going to insinuate that a national treasure is not delicious? I won't take that kind of slander here in an egg restaurant. This is going weird places, guys. <laughs> oh, man. I, yeah, I'm trying to get back in shape. Like, I'm not in terrible shape. I just look like a condom full of mashed potatoes. You know, I got that working against me. I've been trying to, like, hit the, hit the gym more often. Uh, I'm glad it's getting to be springtime because I cannot outrun my own farts on the elliptical at the gym. You know, that's... If you speed up, the guy next to you just thinks it's weirder. You know, that's... I know. I look like, uh, I don't know, like Thor's fat white trash cousin or something like that. I, I don't have a hammer, but I have a collection of used car batteries. and I can't throw lightning bolts, but I can trick your little brother into licking a nine volt battery. That's... Or do I... I think maybe I look like a, an IT guy for a motorcycle club. That's... Like, I'll keep your servers, like, going and all that kind of stuff, but they're going to be up to no good. I'll tell you that much. That's, that's what I do by day, by the way. I'm an IT guy. Right? I know all of your secrets. Like... You don't know that about us, but we know all your Wi-Fi passwords. You know, we know your secret email accounts that you're emailing that one guy from. We know all of your secrets. So, you know, guys, when you're in the bathroom on your lunch break, disconnect from the Wi-Fi, okay? That just... <laughs> If I, could, if I can give you guys like one piece of advice as an IT guy before I leave here, just like disconnect from the Wi-Fi. It's easy. And then you can do whatever nefarious deeds are on your lunchtime brain, okay? I'm a... I, I don't know. Why would I be a stand-up when I have useful skills. That's what I don't understand either. <laughs> by, by day, I help fix all of your IT problems, and then by night, I pretend I'm an artist by talking to strangers. So this is a weird lifestyle choice. I have children. Why has no responsible parent or party stopped me from doing this? This is... <laughs> But back in, let's say about 12 years ago, it was about 2012, I started having major health issues. Just pain all the time, nausea all the time. You know, and I, I, I went to doctors, they thought I had some form of cancer. Like they had, they had scanned me for all these things. I, they'd taken organs out that they didn't take out. And yeah, it's like, I, I think the insurance company thought I was faking it, and so they got, like, they stopped paying for my injections. It, I'm not here to depress all of you. Actually, they paid me money to do the opposite of what I'm doing right now, so I apologize for that. But I, <laughs> I say all of that to, to, to tell you why, why am I doing stand-up comedy. That's why I'm here. It's because sometimes, you know, you're, you're just wasting your life or you're not doing what you're supposed to do or you're not following whatever path you're supposed to be following. And God has a way of just kicking you right in the butt. Just forcing you down the path that you're supposed to go down. 
So I spent 10 years being sick. I spent a year in the hospital every single day. Just, I had to go to the hospital twice a day for the entire year of 2014. I got to the end of it and the doctor said, uh, I don't know if you're sick. I think you might just have a bad case of marriage. Some, that was, some of you acknowledged that with like, oh yeah, I know what that's like, oh. It's like my body took that till death do us part vow to the literal, like the extreme and was just like, let's just take the easy way out and. But then I got divorced. I'm remarried, happily remarried and I started doing comedy eight years ago, and every facet of my life has improved as a result of following that path. Yeah. So I'm just saying, if, if there's some secret passion that you're out there fostering and you're too afraid to do it, or, like you, or if you're in a bad marriage, get out of that right now. You can do it on the way out the door. I'm dressed like a lawyer. I can probably like sign the paperwork. Like we can, we can hook you up, okay? But otherwise I'm saying follow your dreams, okay? Because that's what we're here to do. We only get one go around as far as I know. And so I'd rather make this one more interesting, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But. That's my, that's the most profound thought I could think of. I was, I wanted to be one of those comedians that would get up and say something, you know, profound. That would capture people, you know? Not like the comedians you saw tonight, but like the heroes, the ones that you... I, sorry, I didn't mean to sh take shots at the entire show. That was just me being silly right there. But then I'm like, I spent all of my time raising these mediocre children. <laughs> I don't get to have time for profound thoughts, so this is as close as I can come. And so one of my friends is like, well, okay, maybe you don't have time for profound thoughts, but what if you're raising the next generation of profound things? Your thought about My daughter asked me what kind of meat was in chicken alfredo three days ago. <laughs> My entire life has been wasted, I think. I did, you know, I gave all that speech earlier, but now that I'm reflecting on all the stupid things my kids say, like, I'm not raising the next Henry David Thoreau over here. This is. I went to ITT Technical Institute. You don't get to have profound thoughts. If you go to the mall perfume kiosk of academic institutions. You just... I got my degree in computers and stuff. That's what's on my diploma. Computers and stuff with a minor in Mountain Dew flavors. That's. Oh, what else? I'll, I used to be a Cub Scout leader. How about that? You guys want to talk about that? Wow! You know what, Germantown? I had you guys all wrong. That was... I tell other towns and other cities that I was a Cub Scout leader, and they pull back on me instantly. It's like... We don't know much about you, sir, but based on the things you've been saying, you should not be teaching kids about pocket knives or self-esteem. I get it. I overdrafted my bank account on Pizza Hut yesterday. You know, I, I'm a bad role model, but I can teach kids important things too. I have lessons to give. You don't dress this fly without having something to pass to the next generation. That's all I'm saying. So do I. I'm, 
I am nothing. I, I think what happened as I bought this at the Goodwill store. And I think what happened, some of you aren't going to get this reference, but I think it's funny. Uh, Uncle Charles from the Bones, Thugs, and Harmony song died and left this at the Goodwill store. Um, he's the only person that has enough diabetes to fit my round, rotund, equa equatorial body. And so I miss my Uncle Charles, y'all. That, that joke was for the one guy who knew about Nebraska and Bone Thugs in Harmony. The rest of you are slacking in Germantown. But I can teach kids important things, like how far you can overdraft your bank account on Pizza Hut, or how far you can drive your 2008 Kia Spectra after the fuel light comes on and you're terrified because it's full of kids and you don't know if you're going to make it to the camping trip or not. And that's, it's 40 miles, by the way, and we made it to the camping trip. Uh, we did not make it back. You can, you, like, you can get there, but you can't get back. But I was a scout leader in Nebraska City, Nebraska. That's not a mythical place, by the way. That's a real place. Hey, there's a home of Arbor Day, by the way. Yeah, other people try and claim Arbor Day. That's our holiday, okay? Don't, don't try and take it. We have two things in our town, uh, trees and racism. That's all you get. So we get Arbor Day, okay? But I told one of the other scout dads that I drive a 2008 Kia Spectra, uh, and they started a rumor in Nebraska City uh, that we have a gay scout leader. It's judgmental, I thought. Like, <laughs> just because I drive a really gay car all of a sudden I'm a gay dude, that's not fair. That's, I, I, I heard from the guy who's driving a sob here, he thought it was funny. That's. Not a Subaru, no, that's, that's a lesbian car. I'm sorry, but a Subaru is for lesbians. A Kia Spectra, I, I went too far, I apologize. This guy brought it out of me, it's not my fault. You've got a soul patch and a cool shirt on. You're gonna, you're gonna survive all the things that I said tonight. I'm sorry that it got weird a little bit, but... They don't, like, a lot of you don't know what to do with me. You've never seen like a genuine maniac before. I think that's what's going on right now. It's okay, I don't bite. Unless you're my first wife. It's like, you know, that's. Anyway, I'm not gay. Ever been? I know, he's disappointed. I, I, I. But I had an entire town of 7,000 people. All of a sudden, they're on board with this gay scout leader that they've suddenly accepted into the fold. I'm not, but everybody was so supportive. It's like, this, is, this isn't bad. I, I didn't get this much support in town when I was straight. So like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ride this rainbow pony all the way to the end of the road. Let's go. Methodist bringing me potato salads. That's like, I don't know what denomination you guys are in here or what side dishes you guys are bringing to the gay table. But if you bring me side dishes, I'll bring your casserole dish back, okay? I'm nothing if not considerate, you know, fake gay dude. That's. I was just afraid if I come out as straight, I'll set back social progress in Nebraska City by 10 years. Like, we don't have that kind of wiggle room. They just got black people in 2008. Like, what am I? They're all of a sudden okay with this theoretical gay scout leader. I was proud of my town for the first time. That's why I bought this suit. It's like, 
they'll accept me in this suit in Nebraska City. Plus, I think one of the dads was kind of into me, and I want to see where that's going, you know? I heard that guy knows how to work on cars. I drive a 2008 Kia Spectra, you know? I wouldn't mind a little broke hatchback mountain for the sake of social progress, you know? Yeah, I knew that part wouldn't get a big splash in this room. That was like, I just thought, you know, you, why not go to the one place where, you know, being a gay scout leader is not going to be the most popular thing and just like tell people that you were and see what happens. Because that's what I do with my free time. Yeah, y'all are going to need an extra half hour at church tomorrow after all the things. And I'm sorry, there's nothing, you know. Did you, did you feel like you got some education tonight? That was not a... It's, no, see, no. Now you're, now you're responding like my wife did to the Rick Moranis thing, and I'm not... <laughs> you know... I don't drive a Kia Spectra anymore, guys. <laughs> no, you guys stop that right now. He doesn't get to get extra laughs off of, off of a scenario I created earlier, and now it looks like he's funnier than I am? Screw No! <laughs> because I'm wearing socks, lesbian socks. I'm wearing Pac-Man socks. These are definitely... Oh, man. You guys want to hear about my brother, Patty? You know, I, I don't believe any of the responses that I just got on that either. It's just... It's just I don't know where I stand with you people. This is just... my brother. When he and I get together, we just do crazy stuff. Okay, I I cannot be trusted to be around my brother because we're gonna, you know, jump off a building or like. Okay, so one time we blew up our toilet with a bunch of fireworks, and he lost his eyebrows in the process. That happened in our house that's just a thing that happens with 20 year olds having a good time right there's another time where he stole a wheelbarrow from a methodist church while we were playing dungeons and dragons that's also a true story i i put the dungeons and dragons part in there because maybe it really is the devil's game i don't know but my brother didn't need a wheelbarrow, by the way. He's just like, they're Methodists. Who cares? So he took it. Their potato salad game is trash anyway. Let's take this one. The craziest thing that my brother ever did was last year, he married a Nebraska City police officer. She was a lady cop, if that's what you guys are tensing up about. No, that was, no, she's not a, they, they don't have Subaru police cars in Nebraska City. That's, but some of you still seem like you're not on board with my sister-in-law being a cop. This might be one of those all sister-in-laws or bastards crowds. I don't know. They, They didn't have a, a cake at their wedding, by the way. They had a table full of donuts. True story. Um, they looked amazing. I, I didn't have any. I, uh, 
I don't know if you've ever seen the donut table at a police officer wedding, but it's surrounded by police officers. It's just lousy with cops. I told my brother, it's like, if you wanted the family to stop talking to you, you can just stand in the comedy. Like, you don't. Dude, you don't have to dive face first into the thin blue line just to prove a point to the family, you know. That's, the thin blue line is what he calls his wife's. Uh, never mind, I'm not going to get that dirty on this show. Um, I think I've done enough damage in here. You guys have been a fantastic crowd. Thank you so much for coming out to Eggs Up. I've been Matthew Blevins. Thank you so much.